How do you process images to achieve the result of deep and stunning black and white photographs? I recently asked Dotan Sagai, a very talented and published street and documentary photographer, to share his secrets. He's showing us how he uses Silver Effects Pro, which is part of the Nick collection made by DxO Labs, who were sponsoring this show. I've been using their collection for years, and I recommend that you check it out. Let's dive right in with Dotan. So we're going to jump into the uh, processing of this. This is an image I actually I, I really like it in color. I would I, I could process it in color as much as you know in black and white. But today yeah. we're going to just watch the the black and white okay. version. So typically the first thing I do when I when I look at a picture like this is um, to look at the exposure. Um, before I even go into Nick Silver Effects, into the plugin, I look at the exposure in Lightroom and I look at my histogram and does it look like it's covering, you know, it's, it's you know, there's nothing. Um, so I'm gonna go into develop mode and in develop mode, I'm getting my histogram and I can hit those little triangles. Yeah. A lot of people don't see those triangles, but what they do is they tell you if there's anything that's underexposed or overexposed. So here you can see there's a little bit of a blue area here. Uh -huh. That means this is completely lost in the blacks. And I don't see any red on here, which means yeah. nothing's overexposed. Yeah. So this, I mean, I don't really mind losing blacks like under that trailer right here. Yeah, exactly. So I'm fine with that. And there's nothing overexposed. So th in, in this particular case, I don't really need to adjust the exposure before going to silver effects. But if often I do, especially with the monochrome, I underexpose images on purpose. So in Lightroom, I would bring them back slightly so that I have a proper histogram before uh, going into Nick. So here I would just jump right into Silver Effects. One of the things I love about uh, working with the Nick collection is that you can just hit that edit in and you switch right over from Lightroom or Photoshop into the collection. And with the latest version of the Nick collection, I told them I would love to go back into an image that I've already processed with oh, Nick yeah. and change things. Totally. And they added it, which I was, know. I was blown away that they added it so fast. And so here you see that little checkbox at the bottom right. So for all the people who have the older version or are still using a free version of Nick, totally worth upgrading just yeah. for that one. Sure, they've added a lot, it's more, a lot more stable, they've added a lot of other things, but this is a great uh, feature because once you leave the picture, you can always go back to it and, and improve it if you see anything else that you've missed. So the way I start here is I've, I've got a little selection of favorites because if you go into Nick, there's like 48 presets yeah. and it's it can be a little overwhelming and a lot of them don't look good with the particular image that you're processing. So I've kind of starred a few of the their uh, presets. I look at a picture for the first time when I bring into Nick, there's no uh, uh, filter to it when you first look at it. Yeah. And then you can put you can put a preset you can pre-visualize different presets. So that's yeah. what I do is I just pre, I've, I've pre-visualized my image with the presets and decide which one, not just to use as a preset, but to use as a starting point. Once I pick it, there's no need to like have that real estate taken up by the presets. I can just close that preset uh, uh. slider and just regain that whole real estate, have more, more space for my picture. Then I, I focus on the right-hand side um, adjustments. So a lot of people, when, when, when you first go into Nick, you find all these things are closed. You really need to expand all these things to see what you're doing. The first thing I do when I get to this point is look at the, they have this tonality protection thing, which can be helpful in some pictures, but in, in a lot of cases, it sort of uh, muddies what you do because it keeps you safe in terms of preserving shadows and preserving highlights. Okay. I want as high a contrast as I can. I really want black blacks and I want yeah. to go all the way into the, the whites and I want an image that's gonna have as much of a tonality range as yeah. possible. So I'm gonna get rid of their shadow protection and their highlight protection and then I'm good because then it really whatever changes I make, I'm really going to see the effect of that as mm -hmm. opposed to having a, a, a muted effect. Then um, 
what I do is I look at different parts of the image and what, what exactly do I want to say with this image and is there anything that is kind of getting in the way of, of my storytelling? In this case, there's a couple of things I can see just right off the bat. Um, I want to just put a little more emphasis maybe on slightly on, on this guy coming out of the bathroom because he's part of the story and I want him to pop. Yeah. Um, so for that... I might do, uh, I might add a control point. Um, so this is where we go into local adjustments. Often people don't know that there's more than those three sliders that you can use in local adjustments. There's that tiny little triangle of a oh, yeah. icon here that a lot of people miss. And once you click it, it opens four more adjustments that you have. Uh, and one, one of them I use a lot, which is the amplify whites, because I find it a lot more natural than just uh, boosting the brightness. So it's just oh, more yeah, subtle. Look at that. So I can just slightly move that. And I want to make sure I'm, I just got him because I don't want to brighten the whole area. I yeah. just want to brighten him. And another uh, cool trick that I've learned is that once you've got a, a control point that you like the effect of, you can duplicate it. So if you hit uh, on Mac, it's the option key and you, um, I forget what it is on PC. I'm sure the PC users will know what the equivalent is, but you can then uh, keep your key uh, pressed while you move that, that point and move it to another area so that you can uh, brighten another part of, of the body here in the same way, consistent with the top. One great processing uh, tip that I would give is that people's eyes, when they look at your image, tends, they te the eyes tend to go to the bright areas. Yeah. And it can be great if your subject is, is brighter than the rest, but, um, and which is great here because Batman is like, he's the hero of this picture, obviously, yeah. uh, being a hero by nature. <laughs> but he's surrounded with white space, which is perfect for drawing attention, there's a great contrast because he's all in black and, and uh, surrounded with white space, which is perfect, except that the white space is going into the corners and I don't want my eye to go into the corners too much. Right. So I'm gonna put another, I'm gonna drop another control point to, in the corner and have a little bit of sort of a vignetting effect by bringing down the brightness okay. slightly. And I might want to make it very diffuse and, and broad, so I'm going to do that. When you have bright spots at the edges of your pictures, that's like a recipe for disaster because that means the eye of the viewer is going to go into those areas and you want the eye to stay in the picture. You're pulling them right out of the photo when you do that. This guy is bright, but I don't mind it too much because he's one of the characters and he's huge and he can you know he adds you know something there's a there are reflections on on here that are not necessarily helping the picture i mean they could be in another context but they're they're not in this context so i'm gonna maybe uh bring them down and bring down the structure as well oh yeah i mean in this picture it's subtle little things like that because you're the eye is less worried about these reflections it's more drawn to the that bathroom sign, which is where I want the eye to go. Yeah. So what I like is each character in this picture is isolated in its own frame, if yeah. you will. So the one is in the frame of the door. the The big guy in the middle is in the is framed by by this shadow in the back of the door. So I, I might want to bring even that shadow down further, so he's even more of a contrast. One tip also with uh, uh, silver effects that, that works great is if you start putting those control points, especially for darkening around the screen, around the image, things will get darker even that you didn't intend to get darker. So dropping a neutral control point, like I'm going to do right by the Batman's face, you'll see the background behind Batman become much more, uh, much brighter. Well, not, not much, but a little bit brighter in this case. But I'm going to drop a couple of control points just to bring what what it does is it just brings that area back to normal or maybe slightly brighter 
And that way, Batman really pops a lot more. One last thing that I would do with this picture, I mean, I'm sure I could spend an hour and just find nitpick more things, but yeah. the wall here is a little bit distracting because there's a lot of structure and detail in the wall, and that's not what I want people to look at. Yeah. So um, those control points that I dropped that have other, you know, like, you know, either brightness reduced and things like that, I'm also going to reduce the structure all the way down to zero. Uh, which, you know, will still leave a lot of structure, but it will help get rid of that, uh, you know, th th that distracting element of, of the kind of the grit of the of that wall. Let, can, let's see the before and after again. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so you go from a picture where it's. Yeah, you could probably read it if Pretty you know muddy, like, read the story, but then you get to like, okay, it's now it's in your face. You really have the story clear. Yeah. This guy comes out of the bathroom, Batman's waiting. There's the bathroom sign. Everything is much more uh, pleasant in terms of tonalities and um, and so one very powerful slider. I'll just finish with that for this photo is the soft contrast. Oh yeah, which I want to be very careful about. You know, if I take it all the way. To here, it's just too much and not yeah. natural looking. If I take it all the way down, it's a mess as well. And you yeah. have so you have to very carefully use it to find just the right balance. So now you have the color, yeah, uh, the original color version, and now the and this is the black and white um, silver effects. This has been wonderful. I learned a lot myself. I'm gonna try some of those new new tools that you showed me. And Nick, that's fantastic. I'm so glad. Thank we'll you. We'll have you back again for yeah, sure. I'm a big fan of yours. Thank you again to DxO for sponsoring this show and for connecting me with Doton. I That's how we met. I can't think of anything else except to tell you guys, if you haven't already done so, to subscribe. We love it when you leave your comments. I see a whole bunch of them. I'm going to read them after the show. I love having you here. Stay safe. Stay well. And remember, say it with me now, remember to get out and capture your own images of life.